Good morning. You know how that week before Christmas, especially with a big snowstorm coming, you're just not real motivated? No? Well, that's how I feel today. Just not real motivated. Anyway, we're getting back to this tractor here. Um, got a little cleaning to do. I think I'm going to go around and pick off some of the heavy dirt, stuff like that. I doubt we're going to wash today, but I might start changing filters and pulling that stuff out. Dad wants to bring his pickup in and change oil, so I don't want to get the floor all wet and everything before he does that. We'll get something done. Good morning. I'm pulling the book out. See, when you're going and buying a used piece of equipment, if the manual looks like this one, you know, used, you probably got a well taken care of piece of equipment there. If it's still in the plastic, you better call the dealer and see if they got service records. Here's ours. Let's see. 16, 17, 22, 127 of 22 back in January. Changed engine oil and filter, fuel filters, engine air filters, cab air filters, hydraulic oil and filter. Okay, hydraulic oil was done last year. Greased ILS in three point, changed hub oil in the front hubs. Okay, so we don't have to do any of that stuff. All we have to do is um, Check the front hub oil. Well, not. I shouldn't say we don't have to do any of that. So we don't have to change hydraulic oil or hub oil. We need to change engine oil. We need to change some filters, air filters, maybe. I don't know. We're going to pull them out and look at them. Like I said, we only put 167 hours on this tractor this year. That's not very many. So we can be a little bit conservative with uh, changing some of these filters and stuff. Um, for reference, the oil change interval on this tractor is 375 hours when you use deer oil and filter. We use a deer filter, not deer oil. But that's gonna change, so it's really 250 hours. I, we're gonna change it anyway, but um, probably not super necessary. And then like the fuel filters and stuff, I think they're four or 500 hours that they can run. Huh, well that oil barrel is about empty, isn't it? I thought there was a little bit more in there than that. I don't know if we're gonna have enough to actually change the oil in that track. We better um, try and get a five gallon bucket around or something before we drain it so that we know we have enough. And if we don't, we need to clean that out anyway. I am gonna go get the forklift so we can get that shuttle down and drain it. We're gonna work on that first, I guess. And then I can, yeah. We can move some stuff around in the shop with the forklift. We should probably think about Maybe not today, but tomorrow, getting the backhoe and the 7520 in the shop so they're warm when we need to push snow on Friday and Saturday. All right, so we're going to drain that tank. I found a empty engine oil bucket. It's clean and still sealed. Well, it's, yeah, it's clean. Um, so I am, I am draining what's left in that tank into there. We'll see how much we get. I think I'm gonna go up there and put some blocks under it so it drains out a little bit better. Uh, and we'll we'll go from there. I could use the pump, but I, yeah, it's just easier this way. We got that draining. If I remember right, these tractors take about seven gallons, 28, 29 quart, something like that. So I don't think we're gonna have enough oil. Okay, we got it drained. Time to get our tank down so we can clean it up. How do we do? Yeah, still a little in there. We'll see what we can do on that. There is a little sludge in the bottom of the tank, not nearly as bad as the hydraulic oil tank was when we did that one last winter. So hopefully we can clean this one up a little easier, but uh, kind of an is what it is kind of thing. Well, I washed the outside of this tank off and uh, my experience last year told me to tip it on its side and let all of the gunk slide down as much as possible so we are and I feel like I need to help it out so I made myself a scraper on a stick here and we're gonna try and uh, scrape that stuff down and maybe out I don't know I don't know how we're gonna clean it out but we're gonna do our best dad wanted to bring his truck in he's got to change oil in that so he's gonna do that here this afternoon I think uh, I got a scraper and scrape that stuff down. We're gonna let her. It's still dripping. It's still, I'm gonna let her go until after lunch, and we'll see if we can't dip some of that oil out of there or something. I don't really want to put diesel or anything in there, well, especially water, to try and clean it out for fear that I won't get it all out of there. I don't know. We may try something. 
I think I had a little scooper. I tried to scoop stuff out when we did it last year. But anyway, we pushed this tractor back. I'm going to start, uh, let's pull the air filters out, look at those, um, see what we can do to this tractor. I, I got just shy of five gallons of oil out of there. So we don't quite have enough of that to change. I may have some in a jug in the oil room. We may still be able to change oil in this tractor and get it refilled okay. Dusty? Yes. But I can still see the blue. Like that's not that's not change worthy at all. So um, 167 hours. Yeah, we're gonna blow that one out and run it another year. We'll use our fancy air filter cleaner. <laughs> I mean, it was dusty. Cleaned up pretty good, except for that little spot there where it almost looks like it got a little wet at some point or something, but we're good. Put her back. Don't ever clean inners. There's an inner and an outer air filter, primary, secondary. Don't ever clean the inners. The other one that can get real bad on this tractor is this uh, cab filter that sits here underneath the front corner of the cab. And when I took the cover off, look what we found. A couple pieces of glass. Imagine that. We're going to be finding glass for a while. Wow. I've never taken an air filter off and been so clean. That is amazing. We're not even gonna blow that one out. We're just putting it right back in. And I'll clean the housing out a little bit, but holy crap, that's awesome. Usually the cab air filters are the ones that get super dusty. But it depends on the conditions you're working in a little bit. And if this tractor didn't plant beans and or anything where it was working in tilled ground that was super dry and dusty, it wouldn't have been in real dusty conditions. Okay, well, we're getting off cheap and easy on the filter changes so far. There's those. I don't believe we really need to do fuel filters either, so we're not going to do that. We did hydraulic last year, and that's a 1500 hour interval, so we don't need to do that. Cab filter is good. The only other one is the one in the back of the seat in the cab, and if that one is that clean, the one inside is probably not too bad either. So, engine oil. We're going to change engine oil filters, but we're not going to do it until we get our engine oil, or we have, know we have enough. So that was easy. So really... We need to clean, and then I did order that cab kit for this tractor. We could start tearing the cab apart. Maybe we should do that. Maybe I shouldn't until I know that I'm going to get the new one. I mean, they said that I got it ordered, but that doesn't mean they have it, and I'm going to get it reasonably fast. Picking. Picking dirt. Hey, look, it's Anna. What's up? We're going to lunch. Oh, it's, it's way up underneath the cab. This is the hardest dirt to get off of these tractors is the stuff up underneath the cab, way up in there. Part of the reason why I really like the 8RX. It's open. You can get to all that stuff. Much, much better. No tires in the way. Super convenient. Okay, lunchtime. We just got lunch. Had to do a little shopping. Um, don't go to Meijer the week before Christmas ahead of a snowstorm. They don't have anything anyway. <laughs> we bought meat and alcohol. That's, that's all you need in front of the snowstorm. Right, Anna? Yes. Anna's with me. And uh, for those of you that don't know, she's my, my sister, who is um, a senior at Michigan State. Yep. And she got a job. You want to tell us? Yeah, for all those concerned people out there that were commenting about my job. Uh, I got a job with Corteva AgriScience um, in their Associate Territory Manager position. I'll start in June. I don't have a placement of like location yet, um, but hopefully I'll get that by March. And basically it's a sales role. I'll be in a, I'll be placed with a mentor territory manager, kind of learning the ins and outs of the company, the products, what I'm going to be doing. I don't know what I'm selling yet either. I haven't been placed in a department. Um, uh, but yeah, pretty cool job. Good benefits. She, she, she could be a direct competitor, <laughs> which might be a problem. 
or she could be on the crop protection chemical side or you're hoping for more horticulture stuff, right? Well, I, I want to be in the crop protection because I could do horticulture with that. Yes. But then the other departments are like turf and ornamental and then urban pest management, which would also probably be pretty cool, but I think they're probably pr really limited on how many people get that position. <laughs> it's not very big and a not it's not a big part of their business relative to corn, yeah so i mean row crop chemicals and seeds and that stuff but i'm open to anything i'm open to going anywhere um so yeah i feel very good about getting a job feel secure um so one more semester and then i graduate then i start my job so i'm excited yep congrats thanks We also made a trip to Menards and bought way more stuff than we needed, but some stuff that we needed. So I got some oil dry, we were out of that. We got lots of shop towels because we were just about out of shop towels. And I found the WD-40 aisle because yesterday Brock really struggled to find a can of WD-40. So I thought, well, we should get some more of that. All kinds of good stuff. But anyway, back to the farm where we should do something. We gotta get that bucket put on the 7520 loader. We'll work on that when we get back. All right, well, that was a good little trip. I thought Dad was gonna change oil in his truck. He hasn't done anything with it yet, so I'm not sure, but. Yeah, it's it's settling, it's better. We gotta figure out how to dip that oil and sludge out of the bottom there and clean it up a little bit. So we'll come back and work on that. I'm gonna go out and get to 7520 ready for the snowstorm. They're calling for, they're calling for a bunch of snow. like. Just west and north of us, there are spots I've seen a map that showed like 25 to 30 inches. Uh, I'm pretty skeptical. According to that map, we're in the 10 to 15 zone. I also am pretty skeptical of that. We'll see. This feels like one of those storms where they tell you it's the end of the world and it's right before Christmas and everybody's excited because it's a white Christmas and so nobody's going to be able to travel anywhere and all this, blah, blah, blah. We end up with two or three inches of snow and it's not that big a deal. I could be wrong, but that's what it feels like to me. So we're going to be ready. We're going to get everything ready to push the snow out if necessary. But I'm not convinced it's going to be all that bad of a storm. So we'll see. It is supposed to be really windy, however. And even if you get three, four, or five inches of snow and, and then you get 50 mile an hour wind gusts, yeah, the drifting is going to be a problem. So I don't know. But anyway, we're going to put the bucket on. Dad's got the forks on it now. He's been all logs up here. But we're done with that for now. See, we've got forks. We need a bucket. They're over there. We might have to move the small one to get to the big one the way it looks. Oh, we'll see. Phil's been hauling some more grain. He's moving some now. I don't know what he's moving, if it's corn or beans or what. But, uh... He just kind of keeps doing that all year. These buckets, attachments, whatever, are held on with some pegs there that when new and not bent up, work really well. When bent up, you have to use a hammer to beat them off and sometimes get real aggressive pushing stuff to get them to latch on. I think we got those off, yep. All right, two buckets. I don't know if you can tell how much bigger that front one is. Well, we use that one for snow. It's too big for rocks and sand and stone and that kind of stuff. But um, definitely much better for snow. So we're gonna move this little one out of the way. Grab it. Moving the little one, put it over here. So I got the, the hooks on the top there, but I, I don't think it's actually latched. Well, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Aha! If you look right under there, just in case you can't see very well. Right there. And there. It's latched. Sweet. Well, that one's not all bent up, apparently. <laughs> All right, well, we got that done. The uh, the guys that bought the International are uh, coming tomorrow morning, it sounds like, to get it. So I'm going to just leave that in the shop. At one point, 
earlier this morning. They texted me and said, would it be all right if we come next week after the snow and the road's clear? I said, sure. And then he texted me back and said, well, I can come at 11 tomorrow. Okay, do that. Um, so, we're just going to leave in the shop. If it was going to be next week, we'd wait. I, I mean, we would take it and put it somewhere else so we could free up the shop. But we'll wait to put other stuff in until we get that done. So after they come and get that, then we'll try and get the 7520 and the backhoe in the shop. Um, I also am kind of waiting for that truck to leave and or Dad's pickup so that we can uh, wash the tractor. It's too cold to do it outside, so we'll do it inside just fine. It's not that dirty. Um, I've gotten most of the heavy stuff picked off, but we still got to do it. And uh, I don't want to, I want to put it up where the drain is and get Dad's truck out of here and other stuff so I don't have too much overspray. So that's what we're waiting for. So we could tear the cab apart a little bit. Might work on that this afternoon. I don't know. We'll see. I've been doing some work on some of my spreadsheets on the computer. My field rankings one specifically, I thought I'd show you that a little bit. And it's got a lot of sensitive information. So I can't show you too much of it, but I can show you a little bit. <sighs> Working on my tank here a little bit. I got a uh, hose on our five gallon bucket pump, manual pump. I'll show you that pump with the big long hose on it stuck it down in there and I was able to suck a lot of it out we didn't get it all but we got a lot it's better all of that stuff I don't know pretty sludgy I don't think I want that in my engine so I'm going to turn this so that it all runs to one side and then back down to the corner and I can get it on one side of that um, drain hump thing there and then maybe I can suck a little bit more out of there, I don't know. Ooh, look. Phil's taking that pretty new truck for a drive. I think he's going to get fuel. Just got a phone call from Dad. He's using his backhoe like a bulldozer again and he broke the bead off of the front tire. I think this is the third or fourth time since harvest. We gotta go rescue him. I'm sure I let the pressure get too low on it and I no big deal. Rub, rub something and I think I 
18. All right, we got Dad all fixed up. The tire put back on. I think he's done heading back to the farm too. Oh, all right, we're back in here. Let's um, let's hide some papers from you guys so you don't see stuff you're not supposed to see, and then take a real broad, wide angle of this so that you can't read any of the numbers, <laughs> more or less. Uh, you'll see them if you want to. Uh, this is my. Borderview Farms field rankings spreadsheet that shows all of our fields and yields and percentage of average going way back to 2007 on here all the way through current year. And um, I've got some pretty cool information in here. So I got this one updated. Scroll over with the 22 stuff in there. And then it shows me the average. And by average, I mean, so what I do is I take the average, the yield for each individual field, and at the bottom, I have our averages for the year, and so it tells me the percentage of that, right? So, um, you know, this field here that this year went 240.9 bushel per acre, and it was good, over 100% of our average, but the green it shows fields that were at least 10% above the average, the red shows fields that were at least 10% below the average. We got more red then green on there, which just means we have some underperforming fields, but a lot of those are really little ones. Like these three here are a whole 30 acres total between all of them, not a big deal. Um, and then I kind of break it down even farther than, so this shows the average of the averages kind of thing, but this breaks it down by crop so I can see which fields are our better corn fields, which ones do better in beans, which ones are better in wheat. We've got a couple that are never wheat. Um, but really what's cool about this is I can chart some stuff. So I printed this out here and um, this is our yields trends going all the way back to 1997 and you can see the last two years have just spiked like crazy i mean we had phenomenal corn is on the top there um just phenomenal corn yields this year and then this one this is the 10-year average so the 10-year average of the preceding 10 years so like this year um, we dropped off 2012 and added 2022 and so uh, our 10-year average corn yield jumped by 7.3 bushels this year um, because we dropped off a bad year added a really good year so that's really good when you can move your 10-year average by that much in one year well you had good crops I am pretty open with you guys and the information and stuff that I share but when we can get down and right into our actual average yields and how many acres and stuff that's just a little bit too much so I'm going to hold off on sharing all of that detail with you. Just know that we had a really good year here because it rained. It rained. That's why. Our insurance agent dropped off a couple dozen cookies. Thank you. We're going to enjoy those. It's 4.30. I'm going to play around on the computer for a little bit. And then I'm going to go home. All right. I helped Dad finish changing his oil in his truck. And... Um, that's going to be it for tonight. So, like I said, we're not real motivated this week. It is what it is. Um, yeah, we didn't really do anything to the tractor today, but we found out that we don't need to do some stuff to it, so that's good. Uh, we're going to try and wash tomorrow. We should be able to get the um, dad's pickup out of there and the international semi. Those guys are coming to get that in the morning. So, hopefully tomorrow afternoon we can do a little washing before we got to get stuff back home in the tractor inside for the uh, snowstorm that's coming. Uh, that's tomorrow's goal. Clean up the 8430. So, thanks for watching today. Like, subscribe, questions, comments, leave them down below. We will see you again tomorrow, most likely. Tomorrow might be the last video for the week. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll throw tomorrow and Thursday, tomorrow and Friday together, and we'll just do one. I don't know. We'll see. We'll watch the snowstorm roll in. So, have a great night, everybody.